Good evening. I'm your host, Karen Eudis, in this series on the Network of Global Corporate Control. Today's show is live and is called Harmony. Thanks, as always, to Carmen Stanley, studio producer and director. And we've got Crochet Starnes on audio. We've got Jamie Fain, who's on, I'm sorry, it was Crochet who's doing prompter, and Jamie's on audio. And we've got Aliyah Jamari, who's our floor director tonight. Dolores Harris is with her husband, who's in the hospital. And I'm very grateful to the people who are making this show possible. We're in Studio A, which requires more staff. This series comes to you twice a month, live, and the other two weeks are pre-recorded. We're talking about a big cleanup of corruption in the world's paper money. Two weeks ago, I said that the relationships between the people who were involved in the cleanup matter, and that we didn't need to take the position of the crooks profiting from the corruption into account. People want me to speak plainly. What do I mean by harmony? I mean that we, humanity, are all singing in a choir using our own individual voices. We're singing the same song, and we're singing in harmony. I mean that, that the banking cartel is not part of our choir. The crooks didn't like this. Who are the crooks? The bankers who print your paper money and then bribe the governments and politicians and lawyers and accountants and journalists and universities using their paper money that they get for free. The crooks have bought up the media, both the mainstream media and the alternative media. Since the media is owned by the crooks, they lie in order to keep the crooks from coming to light. The people at the center of this corruption have been corrupting the world since the previous ice age. The lies and cover-up are so extensive that most people are duped and get confused about what is real and what's fake. For good measure, the crooks use electromagnetic weapons to lull people into complacency. We heard from some of our viewers that electromagnetic weapons are being used in the videos in the DCTV archives on YouTube in an attempt to make viewers drowsy. At the end of World War II, Jose Rizal, who was in charge of the Jesuits and was called the Black Pope, and Ferdinand Marcos, who was Jose Rizal's lawyer, decided to end this scam. They melted down the world's gold in Singapore, stamped it, and put it in a trust called the Global Debt Facility. They gathered up bonds that are now worth over two quadrillion dollars, and they put these in the global debt facility too. They also established the World Bank and International Monetary Fund so that there was a way for people to join together to fight the bankers and end the scam. In the July 10th segment called Closing the Bank for International Settlements, I pointed out that the delegates to the conference at the end of World War II, which established the World Bank and IMF, also voted to abolish the BIS, that's the Bank for International Settlements. Those are the central bankers who issue the world's money. I'm working with all the world's military powers and the people of the world on this cleanup job. It's taken a long time for a critical mass of people to realize that we're working together in a coalition to prevent World War III. All of us get to join in deciding how to run things when there is honest money. You can see evidence that a coalition to clean up the corruption from the banking cartel exists when you know what to look for. One of my jobs is to point out how we are all singing together in harmony. Another of my jobs is to expose the crooks who try to steal the world's gold 
and the two quadrillion in bonds and other wealth in the global debt facility. In next week's segment, I'm going to share what we know about humanity that enables us to maintain our individuality when we join our voices in the global currency reset to clean up our world. What is honest money? It's local currency issued by each village and town in the world for local products produced in the villages and towns. And it's the world's gold that is going to be pressed very thin and put inside the country's money in envelopes that handle just like paper money, but it's really gold. The word for this kind of money is aurum. Obviously, there are a lot more details. I'm putting some of these details at the end of the teleprompter, and you can read these documents when I upload the video of this segment tonight. I put links to the teleprompters in my Twitter and Facebook accounts, and I also put them in the archives that are on YouTube. YouTube hides the teleprompters behind show more buttons in the description of the show at the beginning of the video. The bankers try to censor my information all the time. The censored information spreads to more people as people try to figure out what made the banking cartel try to censor the information in the first place. That is why I say that the censorship is backfiring. The bankers tried and failed to censor the story of the global currency reset. Convincing YouTube not to censor DCTV videos in the series on the network, this series, people are clear that the banking cartel has no business to prevent the free flow of information. Working ourselves free from the electromagnetic weaponry is going to be a big job. We won't stop until this is accomplished. Censorship is terrible. The lies are coming down, including lies about the numbers of us that are working together to open the flow of information. Jose Rizal and Ferdinand Marcos cared about us and set up the global debt facility at grave personal risk. Jose Rizal, when depositing the wealth of the world in the global debt facility at the World Bank, called his deposit the proclamation and declaration of the gift of love. This gift of love, the wealth of the world, is preserved to this day for the intended beneficiaries humanity. These assets are to be deployed in the global currency reset to replace the world's corrupt fiat currency system by exchanging paper currency for local currencies and national currencies out of gold. The global currency reset is very much a product of the coalition that was predicted by the United States National War College with 90 to 95 percent likelihood. YouTube tried to censor the last 10 minutes of the DC TV segment on the 24th of July. This only backfired when I explained what was in the censored 10 minutes. And I put the uncensored version of the broadcast in YouTube. YouTube is owned by Google, and Google was created by the CIA and YouTube cut out the last 10 minutes, what the bankers thought you didn't need to know. The message was in the last 10 minutes that I gave the banking cartel, that the United States National War College's power transition model is extremely accurate, and it's predicting with 90 to 95 percent likelihood that a coalition exists which is stronger than the banking cartel. I compared the banking cartel's refusal to accept the accuracy of the power transition model with the refusal of a general from Ecuador who refused to accept that he was unable to fly when he kept crashing a plane in a flight simulator. That same general ordered a pilot to stand aside and allow him to fly a real airplane which was owned by Tame. 
I used to work in the legal department of the United States Exim Bank. That was before I came to the World Bank in their legal department. I dealt with the payoff of the loan from the insurance proceeds on the aircraft that the Ecuadorian general had crashed. On the 5th of August, Power of the Surf retweeted my tweet from nine months ago. It said, people know about the corruption in the world's money system and are ready for the global currency reset. On the 8th of November in 2017, the Marines, obeying their oath of office, invaded the CIA, which is a foreign agency trying to defeat the United States. The oath of commissioned officers, that's what the Marines were obeying. The banking cartel broke a link four times, which was in the annual meetings of the World Bank and IMF, which approved the global currency reset. These are hidden facts that are now being disclosed, and I've been disclosing them in this series. The Coalition for the Rule of Law, that is, a critical mass of people who understand that we are getting rid of the corruption in the world's money. We're communicating with each other through my social media. Think about how we're going to transition peacefully. That's what we're working on it now. And on the 8th of October in 2017, I mailed letters to embassies and also to the Development Committee for the World Bank and IMF annual meetings and I also mailed them to the officers of the Intergovernmental Group of 24 on International Monetary Affairs. That's a coalition of 134 developing countries. The banking cartel broke the link, so I gave you the first pages of the letters, and I'm giving those letters to you again in links. I'm showing you who the letters went to, and I'm also linking to the letter as it went out. It went to also to the chair of the Board of Governors, who was Indonesia's Minister of Finance. People know about the corruption in the world's money system, and they're ready for the global currency reset, which will use the world's monetary gold and Treaty of Versailles bonds to wind down the banking cartel and get rid of the corruption in the world's money. Twitter analytics erased information on my top supporters who spread the information about our peaceful transition. Twitter blocked a tweet which showed how people are working together. I finally managed to get the information past Twitter's censors. And on the 3rd of December 2017, I'm showing you in the teleprompter where I said that I knew that there's a coalition to clean up the corruption at the World Bank and IMF, and that this coalition is also going to bring the United States military along. I know this because in 2004, a political scientist named Jacek Kugler gave me a very, very powerful model that uses game theory. Jacek Kugler developed this model for the National War College. Three years ago, I found out that the World Bank and IMF were put in charge of the world's wealth in a trust called the Global Debt Facility. So a coalition, which I call the Coalition for the Rule of Law, predicted by the National War College's model, is in charge of cleaning up the corruption at the World Bank and IMF. And because the World Bank and IMF are at the center of the world's financial system, we're cleaning up the corruption in the world's financial system as well. As predicted by the power transition model, and as I've learned directly from some of the troops, and as we saw on the 18th of November 2017, when an expeditionary unit of the Marines attacked the CIA, the coalition for the rule of law is embedded in the world's military forces. Because of the corruption in the world's governments, we're also cleaning up the world's governments. 
and we're cleaning up the corruption in the world's military powers. I'm sitting in the very center of the world's money system. I'm a whistleblower who reported corruption and was fired illegally from my job in the World Bank's legal department after working there for 21 years. I'm attaching to the teleprompter a letter that I wrote to the DC Bar Board of Professional Conduct in 2010 about how the World Bank's lawyer broke the professional code of conduct and legal ethics by falsifying documents in the World Bank's administrative tribunal. The corruption in the world's military powers and the corruption in the world's governments are being cleaned up by the people living in the countries of the world without interference from the World Bank and IMF. The people are cleaning up the money systems in their villages and towns by issuing local currencies. Then they're going to work from the grassroots up to take back their countries. This will happen peacefully and gradually, starting from the villages and towns. The corrupt banking cartel is going to try and maintain its dominance every step of the way, and we're going to use what we have learned about the corruption to prevent backsliding. The chances of backsliding are there, it's true, but I think we're nevertheless going to clear up the world corruption. Command and control from a corrupt center can't stop grassroots initiatives to clean up corruption when the overseer mandate trustee has already offered clean money to supplement the local currencies and cut off revenues to the corrupt center. We all have been getting a lot of on-the-job training in how to clean up the corruption. I've been getting training in how to communicate with everybody, and I've been keeping everyone informed. The record of our cleanup efforts is there for everyone to see. It might get confusing because the corruption in the world's monetary system is massive and most people would rather not admit that they've been duped as badly as they have been. We're working very carefully so that there are enough people who are willing and able to reassure the rest of the people that have remained clueless. We're following the National War College's power transition model which is very accurate and gives us better than a 90% chance that we manage to clean up the corruption peacefully. I'm going to put the rest of the tweet that Power of the Surf retweeted at the end of the teleprompter. In the meantime, I'm going to show you that I'm relying on all of humanity to clean up the corruption in the world's monetary system. I work together with all of humanity, and I don't partner with anyone else. I've made that clear. There are new people joining us all the time. On the 2nd of July, I said, Dear people, something happened today that I'm going to nip in the bud. A Twitter account that I blocked because I didn't want anyone telling my followers what videos to watch did something else I don't want. They gave a list of people and tried to create the impression that I have alter egos. I have no alter egos because I speak for the Board of Governors of the World Bank and IMF, and I'm the Overseer Mandate Trustee of the Global Debt Facility. I represent the wealth of the world. I can have no alter egos. You can appreciate why that is. And now I found out that I've come to the end of the teleprompter, so I have 10 minutes to speak extemporaneously, which is, I like to do that actually, because it's important that you see that I'm not scripted. I do write the teleprompters. I do that because I want to make sure that people can follow what I say. And we've learned that there are some people who are being put to sleep. YouTube, which is owned by Google, and Google was created by the CIA, has very powerful weaponry that um, can put people to sleep. And the way you know that this weaponry works, it's scientists have actually um, studied 
how people think. It turns out that our brains are not where we think. Our brains function like modems, and there's a very central place where all of humanity has their thoughts processed. And this weaponry that is being used by the military goes back into the circuitry in people's brains, which function like modems. And I can tell you, um, once you know that this weaponry exists, you can realize uh, just how this mind control uh, technology works. You have thoughts, and you wonder at the thoughts because they don't seem like they're yours, but they are thoughts in your brain. And if you take your time, you analyze these thoughts. I can give you an example. In 2014, I went and lived in Japan because I was looking at the power transition model, and I knew that the Japanese are very important. The United States has a treaty of defense with Japan. Japan doesn't have its own military. And for that reason, Japan is not going to allow the military to surrender unilaterally when the Federal Reserve paper currency crashes. All paper currencies crash. And because the United States has monetary gold reserves in the global debt facility, all that has to happen is Japan and Germany has the same problem, has the same exact issue. They want to make sure that the United States military has access to the monetary gold reserves. So anyway, knowing this, I knew that I had to go to Japan, which is where I went in 2014. When I was in Japan, I kept having this thought that I needed to go to the military base. But when I thought about it, I thought, well, why would I go to the military base? I would be apprehended. That's not a smart idea. So although I had that thought, this was one of my introductions to mind control. When you analyze what your thoughts are, you realize sometimes those thoughts would lead you in a very bad direction. Another time that I realized that I was being subjected to mind control was when I went to a conference. And some of the people at the conference, I felt very reserved to. But I also had a very strong visceral response of being feeling like they were old friends. And I started to analyze that. I thought, well, why would I have such a strong positive response to these people who I really don't know and seem kind of suspicious? Well, that was mind control. So once you realize that the mind control is there, and of course some people are more sensitive than others. So uh, for example, when I was living in Japan, I went into a guest house, and right across from me, there was a, a plant, a, a US military soldier was living right across from me. And that person, um, I, I don't know what people were thinking, but uh, we had a, a common uh, restroom, and every time I went there, um, he would go out in the hall wear, without a shirt. And so when I realized what people had intended, I said just the opposite. I said, you know, that person is not very attractive. Um, so you can, once you realize that there's mind control, you can play with the people who are subjecting you to that mind control. And as I said, some people are more sensitive than others. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to touch on uh, when we have this time is the local currencies. I've put the links in the teleprompter to how to create local currencies, but really there's no one way to do it. This is up to each and every individual community. But once you have your own local currency in your community, you have full employment. And what's, what's going to happen is that all of the communities are going to create their own local currency. And some, some communities already have this local currency, for example, the Berkshires. Uh, and you can go to those communities that have already put their local currencies up and running, and you can learn from them. And one of the things that you will have, if you want, 
is you will have the ability to exchange the local currencies for the national currencies. Actually, I believe Berkshires um, can be exchanged for Federal Reserve notes. Well, during this transition, we're going to be phasing out the banking cartels, paper currencies, but we're going to be doing it very, very gradually. And as we do this, we're going to be learning about how to function and clean up the corruption. The corruption is very evident. Uh, what you can see in uh, a recent tweet is that some of the, the countries, some of the people in the countries are looking to see whether their governments are legitimate and they're finding out that no, they're not. So in the case of Hungary, um, they put a website up and they actually contacted the Secretary General of the United Nations and said that the people that were claiming that they represented Hungary at the United Nations were not legitimate and they said that their constitution was actually not in effect. Now, that's exactly the situation that I've been telling you we're in in the United States and every single country is in the exact same position and what's going to happen is that people are going to gradually recognize that yes, we, we, we need to clean up this corruption. It's nothing other than corruption, but it's been in place for thousands and thousands of years. And so people have gotten used to it. There are other people who have done very systematic um, research and one of the places that has done this systematic research is Moscow State University, where they've gone back and they've analyzed history, and they found out that the version of history that we think is true history is made up. It's been made up, and they, can, they have actually uh, documented what the reality is. A group of us that includes the world's military powers is working together to clean up the world's corrupt money system. We're working together in harmony. The bankers and the pharaonic bloodline families that are directing the bankers at the center are still trying to confuse the people who can't yet see through all of the lies. The transition is taking some time because of electromagnetic weapons that hypnotize some people. We're learning how to work together in the transition. Until next week, I'm your host, Karen Hudis.